Welcome to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Christy Derry. And I'm Kevin King. And today we are going to bring you rock and roll. <laughs> Our <laughs> guest has helped define an era in rock history. His songs and guitar performances have been featured on more than 200 renowned albums, garnering more than 35 platinum and gold <laughs> records, BMI Songwriter Awards, Emmys, and numerous prestigious, prestigious international awards. He has worked with such greats as Alice Cooper, Aerosmith, Kiss, Meatloaf, Etta James, <laughs> Tina Turner, Frank Sinatra, and dozens of others. We would very much like to welcome Dick Wagner to Celebrate Michigan. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> we are so glad very to have you on our show. That Great. list is so long. When you were young, when you were a kid, did you ever think you'd have such a successful career? Uh, I didn't think about it when I was a kid. When I got to be about 17, I started to think about it. Yeah, and is I, this what you dreamed of? I had of? hope for uh, <clears throat> some modicum of success, and fortunately, it, you know, it happened. I didn't know the list would be that long. Actually, if you look at my discography, it, it's a lot longer than that, but some of the things don't mean that much. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was looking on your website, and I felt like I just kept scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and it just never ended. I've just been busy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been very busy and uh, had good fortune in being teamed up at times for projects that were, you know, very famous and very uh, monumental in their own way. So I want to start with, all right, the, the basics of writing a song. So when you go into... Uh, you know, you get a concept together, and then how does that process work? Well, you know, writing songs, it's, uh, you can do it different ways. You can start with a title. Let's say you get an idea or out of a conversation. If you, you, most of my songs and most songs for songwriters, I think, come from conversations that you're having with someone. Someone will say something, or something will come to you, and you'll go, that's a song. You know, all you have to do is remember it, write it down, and then mm -hmm. you've got something to work from. Mm -hmm. I also think that finding a title like that can uh, evoke a certain kind of mood. You know, it's a song about war and peace, or it's just a, a love song, you know, you're going you're gonna to get a mood about mm -hmm. it, which then dictates the kind of music you're going to create around it. Mm -hmm. And then as you do that, that inspires you into writing the lyrics. You know, which sometimes you can sit and actually write an entire lyric first. Uh -huh. So you have that option also. But usually I'm at that point of making the music, whether it's on piano or guitar, and that will dictate, out of that mood, will dictate the lyric, you know, and you start to, you start to build a song that way. Uh -huh. um, I've had pieces of music that I've written and then maybe you know, seven, eight years, ten years later, you actually get the lyric for it. Mm -hmm. That's happened to a couple of my best, <coughs> my best songs, really. Give me an example of one of your, your best songs. In 1968, I was working with a band here in Michigan called The Frost, okay? And they were a very popular band, and I, I used to write all the music for the band. And I was writing a song one day um, for The Frost, but the lyric wasn't good enough. It was a ballad. It was really a unusual, beautiful music. And so it kind of sat around for until 1975 uh -huh. when I first got together with Alice Cooper. Uh -huh. So I had this song called I'm Moving On. <laughs> oh, that's... You know, I mean, yeah. really... <laughs> we all know what that implies. <laughs> yeah, a, trem a tremendous title and... Uh, so I had all this music, and I was playing it for Alice, and, and thinking to myself, Alice Cooper, he's not going to want a ballad. So about halfway through, I stopped the tape. This is the days when you had cassettes mm -hmm. and a tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something new, kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, so he said, no, I, I really love that. Let, let's hear it again. So I played it again, and he said, I love that song except for the lyrics. And I said, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hate them, too. So <laughs> He said, I've got a title for a song that I've been wanting to write for a while, and it's called Only Women Bleed. And so let's take that music and that title and see what we can come up with. Mm -hmm. At that time, we were, we were in L.A., we were at his house, and we were sitting around the pool, but we went in the house, sat down with the guitar, and it took about 20 minutes and we wrote this song, not, I mean, Only Women Bleed. 
And, uh, you know, the rest is history. It's been recorded by like 30 different artists. Wow. It's one of those songs where, you know, like every three months you go to the, to the mailbox and take the check. And <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's, and that's, that's one of those Vegas. nice songs. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. songs have a life of their own, and a, if they're successful enough, you know, they pay you. I mean, I've been doing most of my living for the last 35 years on that song. Wow. wow. Aside from all the other songs I've written, that one song has, Next, has kept me, although I just lost 18 pounds, uh, only women believe maybe it made me a fat guy for a while. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, those are good ones. You, out of all those renditions, do you have one that's a favorite, or do you like your, the original the best? Well, I like the original, but I <coughs> recorded it myself, which is an okay version. And then I produced a, a, a young singer from uh, New England, a girl named Wednesday, and we did a, I wrote a new verse for the end of it because the song is actually about domestic violence, you know, and a woman's position in the society. Um, was, in fact, it was the first uh, song dealing with domestic violence, but um, so I wrote a new last verse for it and for, for Wednesday so that she could speak out. She was in, involved in, you know, domestic violence programs and you know, uh, lifting women, and so I wrote a, a last verse for it, and we did that version of it, uh -huh. and I brought in a gospel choir with it and all that. And oh. it, that's my favorite version of the song. How do you know when you write a song that you're, you say to yourself, this song will stand the test of time? They will listen to this song 25 years from now. Well, you never know that. I mean, you just have to have a feeling for, you know, what the... The importance of the song, I'd say, probably. Um, there are certain songs that I've written with or without Alice. They all became hits, but you know, you know, at the moment you finish the song, that this is a hit. Uh -huh. Now, all you got to do is record it correctly, right? And mm -hmm. get it out to the people in the right way. Uh -huh. I mean, there's so many factors involved in getting a hit record, but at least you know that the song is a hit. You know, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so far, I've been right every time. It's always been a hit. <laughs> It's very gratifying. All uh, right. We're going to take a short break, but stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to talk more with legend Dick Wagner. Stay tuned. We'll be Thank right you. back. Thank you. can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. So, are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. 
When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Kevin King. And I'm Christy Darried. We are talking with the maestro of rock, musician and songwriter <laughs> Dick <laughs> Wagner. And where did that come from, the maestro of rock? That is your nickname. It's, it, it is a fan site on uh, Facebook, right? <laughs> uh, I had no idea. I thought social media was just for kids. All right. So like five years ago, I decided to go on Facebook. You know? <laughs> And now I've got these fan sites up there and all these, i got like 10,000 fans. And I converse with them all the time. You know, so I, sometimes I go like, I'm going to be on here at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight. Talk to me. And all oh, of a sudden, cool. click, 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 click. <laughs> one, wow. one night I had like 200 people go online here to talk to me in a, in a half hour. So the social media has really worked for me as far as staying in touch with fans and making it a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. You and know? they get an actual and, thing and I, back and I said to message. myself, at that time, you know, you're 65 years old and what are you doing? You're talking to all these kids. But they're not all kids. They're, they're just people who have been fans of mine for so many years. I've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to talk about your beginnings. You, you, you know started that? in the Detroit area. What was that like for you? I did. Well, it's Pontiac, Detroit, in that area. That's where I lived. But um, my band, I had a band called the Boss Men, and we were a very popular band and became popular regionally. And then I left that band and formed a band called the Frost. And the Frost were like a very phenomenal band as far as popularity. We, we held the attendance record in every club that opened in this whole state, I think in the 1960s, 67, 68, nice. around that time. And uh, we were very influential in, in, in the beginnings of that Detroit rock music scene, mm -hmm. you know, in the late 60s and 70s. And uh, what, it was, what it was like was fantastic. It just, just to be part of that and have this energy because in, in Detroit, in Michigan in general, the fans, are just like so motivated. Uh, the energy toward music, you know, mm -hmm. was just so high level, and so the audiences really were behind us, and it was just gr a great, a great time. And so, all the groups, like from England and everywhere, always wanted to play in Detroit mm -hmm. because it was such a rock and roll city. Mm -hmm. And of course, the place. To play was the Grandy Ballroom. I don't know if you've heard of that place. But oh yeah. <laughs> in fact, tomorrow night, a Friday night, we're doing a. It's at the uh, Tangent Gallery in Detroit. There's going to be another showing of this movie, Louder Than Love, which is the story of the Grandy Ballroom, and it's a great film. And so we're doing that. We're going to do a panel discussion. Then they're going to introduce my new music video, which is called Motor City Music. It's a song I wrote as a tribute to the, the eras and the artists mm -hmm. of, of Detroit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I believe that Detroit and Michigan, for that matter, together, is the only area really that has had significant music and significant artists every decade, you know, mm -hmm. from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and so on, every era, every decade has introduced from Detroit new and significant artists. And I don't think any other city can, can claim that, really. Speaking of, of energy, what's it like to, to be on the receiving end of all that energy, whether you're on stage or from fan interaction? And I always wondered, how difficult is it to come off of that high? <laughs> and just, you know, at night and you, you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Or, or maybe or later morning. in the morning yeah, you yeah. lasted all night yeah. at the party. You know, like, how do you switch that off and say, okay, I'm just normal you know, now? <laughs> there's, there's no switching it off. You know, like you have to be in this, or at least for me, I'm always in that, you know, that feeling of euphoria from this business mm -hmm. and making music. It's uh, switching it off. When do you have to really switch it off? you got to keep that aliveness in you no matter what age you are and how do you well, how, how do you all the you know women and, and fans and how do you you know drinking and all that stuff that goes along how do you keep that in check 
<laughs> well, you have no choice. You're going to live or die, you know. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I, I went through a lot of health problems because of, you know, years of that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. And so I had to eventually make a decision to either do that and probably kill myself or, you know, stop doing that mm -hmm. and, and live and continue to go on. But the energy of the music and the making of the music and the fans is still there. Gotcha. Okay. You know, but just the, the extra thing, like the drugs and the drinking and stuff, those are gone. Okay. You know, I, had to, I had to stop it. You can't live in that all the time. Mm -hmm. It's too much on you physically, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, during your career, was there, what was the moment where you looked back and you said, wow, uh, look, you know, look <laughs> at where I am, look at who I'm working with. Uh, were there multiple moments like that throughout your career where I, you were I just used like, to, look at me go? You know, I used to, every year I would take a really good look, you know, at myself and what I had done, where I was progressing to. And so there were multiple moments of that, you know, like, wow. <laughs> that would happen this year, gold records and this and that, and um, working with some great artists, and so it happened periodically, you know. Was I there one in particular that I can't that pinpoint a moment exactly. To me, there are certain moments, if you write a song and, and you know that that's it, it's a great song, that's a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you record a song and it just comes out, it's just beautiful, and you know it's beautiful. That's a moment. So you get all of these little moments that keep you moving on and on and on because it's easy to get discouraged too, you know. Yeah. Well, and I can imagine. If, have you ever gone through like one of those dry streaks where it's like none of the songs are quite working <laughs> out and nothing's quite coming together, or that recording just didn't work? Sure. I mean, there are times when uh, I don't know the fountain runs dry for a little while, but for me, I, I know how to. How to stimulate myself and get back into it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when I, I do these songwriting seminars and I talk to people who are, you know, budding songwriters, and there are certain practices you have to maintain in order to continue to become a writer. And one is you got to you got to two hours out of every day you have to dedicate to songwriting. Wow! Because if mm -hmm. you're going to be if there. you're going to be an artist. You have to do that. You have to constantly be inside of it. And I write songs all the time. Just I've written a couple of songs the last week. Huh. Just okay. by by the nature of sitting down with a pen and paper and just it never stops. Coming up with ideas and then I go pick up my guitar or go to the piano and make it work. Huh. All right. Well, that's a good place. We're gonna we're gonna take right. another short break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about Dick Wagner's book, Not Only Women Bleed. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> of a car crash. Three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor. Tether. Latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. My name's Reggie. Just recently, my wife and I took in her sister's children. And we already had four, so I went from becoming a family man to a man with a bigger family. Now, you can't eat love, so I don't know how I'm going to feed them tonight. How was that, Rich? I think I look more like Denzel. That's cold, man. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Laura says we should start worrying about 
drinking at these things. They're only 12. I know. I'm just glad you know better, sweetheart. You're too smart for that, right, honey? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Christy Derry. And I'm Kevin King. We are talking with the maestro of rock, Michigan native musician and songwriter, Dick Ragnar. Now, Dick, you wrote this book, Not Only Women Bleed. Now, with the career that you've had, I'm sure, <laughs> this, I mean, the stories that are in here, you've got so many, and you, you decided... Have to, you have to read the entire thing. It, there are many, many stories from inside the bubble of the 1970s rock business, basically. And also about my childhood and why I got into this music and um, a lot of other things that we won't necessarily discuss on the air, but <laughs> you, you can read it in the book. And um, it's a very honest, uh, brutally honest, really, book. And, uh, you know, I like to think of it as profane, but yet profound in its own way. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. I, I always like to know when did how did you know this was your purpose in life was to be a songwriter and a musician when did that come? I think I knew it back when I was ten years old and my uncle John used to play the guitar at family events right and we'd sing John Henry and all these old folk songs and I always wanted to play the guitar so I'd go up and pick it up and they'd tell me to put it down you're gonna break it. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm 10 years old, I'm like, well, I want to play that. I just love the sound of the instrument. So finally, my dad finally got me a, a guitar when I was like 16 and a half years old. And I just went at it and conquered it and used to practice 10 hours a day. Wow. Drove my family insane. <laughs> They'd be in there, they want to watch a TV program, and I'm over, <laughs> the, over there in the chair and I'm playing. Was it electric or acoustic? It was an acoustic at that time. And then uh, I got my own electric guitar uh, a year later <laughs> and started, you know, started playing. And there was a band that I went to see one night. They were called the Eldorados. They were from uh, Pontiac area, okay? Uh, they had two uh, gold top Gibson Les Pauls and they wore, wore these blue smoking jackets and they, they just looked cool on stage. Uh -huh. uh, and that was the moment I said, that's for me. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Wow. And it's, how old were you then? Oh, uh, geez. I guess I'd have been around 18, okay. somewhere around there. And so how do, what would be your advice to aspiring musicians or just people in general about how do you find that passion in life? And how do you find, like, this is I think it. you're born with it, or, or maybe it gets developed in some way, depending on how you're living your life. But it's always been there for me. When I was in the seventh grade, and I was living in Royal Oak, they used to have this Friday night dance at, at the, the school mm -hmm. called Bogey. Boy, girl, get it? <laughs> uh, bogey, and, and I, I never danced before. I was gonna be really bold and go to the dance. And uh, I walked in the door, and there was Little Richard singing Long Tall Sally. Oh, I, yeah. I heard that song and I just went out of my mind. It was like the most beautiful thing I ever heard. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And so inspiring. I guess that inspired me to want to get into songs and get into style like that. Um, and I did actually dance with somebody that night. I don't think I was very good. I just bopped around a little bit and listened to Little Richard and, you know, the cast was made at that time. And that okay. was what I was going to do. Now, having worked with so many different artists, do you have a favorite one that, that you just you really clicked with? And I mean, obviously, you worked with Alice Cooper for, for I think a long Alice time. Cooper, I think Alice Cooper was uh, my, the best collaboration I've had because we were so you know, <coughs> together. I mean, we were both in the same sense of humor. And so we'd always start um, songwriting sessions by coming up with weird song titles and <laughs> and making up things that were just, uh, you know, writing songs is just making something up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's not there and then all of a sudden it is. 
But we would do it, and we, then we would laugh for a while. I mean, really uproariously. I, I'm sure we weren't that funny, but to, <laughs> we, to each other we were. And oh, was, yeah. oh, yeah. That's you amazing. know, so then eventually we'd settle down and write something good, something mm -hmm. serious. But uh, with Alice and I, it was always really quick and, you know, effortless. And we'd come up with hits and come up with concepts for albums. And it was really a, a great collaboration. I want to make sure we get your website in there for those who are watching it and they're thinking, I, I want to read more and I want to, you know, get in contact or um, wagnermusic.com. Right, that's where my discography is. If you're curious about the records I've played on, that's where you want to go. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Now, again, what advice would you give to someone who wants to break into the business or wants to be a songwriter or musician? What are some things that, some steps they can take to get to that place? <laughs> That's a tough one because the business is constantly changing and, and getting into it. I mean, you just have to be true to yourself, write your own music, and don't worry about the current trend. Uh -huh. Because if you listen to the current trend, um, by the time you actually figure it out and write it and copy and be in the current trend, it's 10 months later. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and things are changing again already, so you're always behind the curve. So you want to just write what you write for yourself. And eventually, if, if you're good enough, the business will come around to you. All right. Hmm. You know, you can't just force your way in. Um, okay. Thank, you know, we're, we're out of time, but thank <laughs> you so much for being on our show. Oh, it has pleasure. been my an pleasure. absolute pleasure. pleasure. Again, wagnermusic.com you. you if you're interested in learning more about Dick Wagner and thank getting you. his book or thank looking you. at his discography. Well, thank you for tuning in to our show where we celebrate Michigan together. We'll see you next time.